what really makes our strawberry system unique is that we grow them in vertical upright hydroponic towers. We have 15 rows of our towers out here. Um, we have 10 rows that are 60 towers each, roughly, give or take, and then five that are 40 um, in our smaller field. And in each of the towers, so each of the 60 or 40, there are five of these cloverly pots that just stack, snap together. And so each pot holds four plants. So then for each tower, it's 20 obviously multiplied out for the field itself. Um, in our trial, we have four different media types that are in the middle of our field, our big field, so we can see side-by-side -side comparisons of what they look like um, compared to each other. The field that you see behind us, it's basically we had to put together a trellis to hold the pots up. They're all um, it's half inch conduit with, uh, inch and a half, inch and a quarter or something like that. PVC that holds the tower or the pots up off the ground at knee height there. Um, because we're on a windy location, we had to go through and add some end posts and some ground stakes and a couple eight foot T posts staggered throughout with a high tensile wire. There's not really any tension on that wire, but just something to hold those conduit from moving around. You'll notice that our rows are north and south here it the property actually doesn't quite look like it is north and south the way we're sitting here but it actually is sitting fairly close to north south and the reason that they're set there or set up like that way is so that the morning sun can come up in trance and move over and actually catch um basically three sides of the towers over the course of the day in order to get uniform growth and uniform ripening um it is a management type thing that we have to do though is go through and rotate those pots uh 180 degrees once a day we do that for sunlight we do that to give the plants a little bit of a break from the wind and irrigation and irrigation water flow distribution through the towers this is our first trial um this is a mix of the chips that we saw hydrating before that was in the bag not ground up though it's just the chips and then it's a mix of the peat material that we saw hydrate it and it's mixed at uh, one part peat, three parts chips i believe um so the peat holds the water the cheap chips give us drainage um the chips actually add to flow a little bit of nutrients i think as well i can't 100 verify that so pros to this media is it's fairly well drained um and you can easily change drainage by adding more peat to that mix to suit your needs um, right now we're finding about similar water usage across the board from all our media out here um, i don't know that that will hold through as plants start to size up though the next treatment here is the peat that we had so the ground up peat mixed up with the chips that we have but the chips are also ran through the chipper shredder thing um, i think we're at one part peat and three parts of uh, Roundup chips out here. Chips themselves are pretty well drained and get pretty dry. And there, that one is a great option for wet years. So we wanted to see if we could find that same material and make it to be a little bit more suitable for a wet year. You, you end up with a ton of labor. I mean, because you're already running stuff through the chipper. Then you got to back mix it with the peat and it doesn't store well so it's not something we can do during the off season i've got iron close chlorosis on some of these some of these leaves so i still need to fully refeed it and things like that and account for some of the excess of bleaching that the other media has so i'm not gaining anything by adding the extra labor to this media so this one will never be seen on this farm again another media that's in this trial this one is the chips that we had and then ran through the chipper shredder mulcher thing and it's just a nice fine grain material that we saw earlier the reason that we like this one is it's very well drained so we get into a wet year water moves down through here and these strawberries are never wet in fact we got a half inch of rain this morning we may if it gets sunny and warm out we may have to irrigate this afternoon 
Um, and I should mention all of these are on a twice a day irrigation cycle. That's the way we're set up. The challenges on it though is the nutrients run out and then you end up with iron deficiency. So you can see I've got some iron deficiency here. So it becomes really critical to make sure that you're managing, putting just enough water on to get everything hydrated, but not too much and leaching excess out. And then coming back in, you're going to have to do some foliar feeding after rainfalls. Labor wise, um, the stuff is really easy to hydrate. It's yeah. really easy to chip, other than it takes time. Right. Time is the worst part of the labor with this. It um, Planting into it is really easy. It really doesn't take much time at all. It's so fine that you can just pop the plant right in. Um, really, it's the time that it takes to hydrate and run everything with schools. Finally, we have our peat and perlite mix. This is, again, more closer to what's generally used for hydroponic strawberries and flat culture beds um this is nice because you can pre-mix it and put it all together and run it through an auger or a pot filler i mean this is designed to go through a pot filler it's also the cheapest overall of all the different types of media and the lowest labor of all the different types of media going to a what i think is a little bit higher quality peat media going to a higher ratio of perlite in there and perlite is going to um detract water so it's going to shed water away from the plants it's actually working out pretty well for us the challenge on it is it dries out and so when it dries out it blows and so we have peat and perlite that's blown all over the place out of here it's hard to keep it wet on a windy windy day inside a greenhouse or a high tunnel where we could provide wind protection this would be great because it would never blow around it'd be pretty easy to manage and keep place water flow and distribution across the pots throughout the tower by far this is the best um again it's going to be your better option when you get into a droughty situation like we've had the last couple weeks we get into a wet period we may end up struggling again so we'll we'll have to see how that goes the other thing that I like about this is that you can direct seed and plant other things into it pretty easily. Uh, one other thing to note with the peat and perlite is I had commented on the ease in planting into the chipped up stuff. This is even easier. I think I had timed at one point and we were able to plant an entire tower in a minute. Which means on a long row, you got an hour planting which is fast. We can do a short roll like this, one person in 45 minutes. Um, and our reports will all reflect actual person hours per, mm -hmm. per unit, um, but it's fast. 